Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to focus on SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition teams because it's really heating up. And um, we're going to start with Badger Loop, University of Wisconsin. Um, day one update on the 15th. Uh, today was our first official day on site with SpaceX advisors with a lot of tests complete and only one week to do so. We aimed at a star strong start and came prepared. Um, specifically, the electrical team um, had a successful but late night debugging and preparing for the long day in the California sun. We were able to make some progress on pod navigation batteries as well as go through battery safety checks to ensure that all team members would be safe in the event of a battery emergency. That's really smart. Um, today, uh, or yesterday, they hope to have a comprehensive um, review of navigation, high voltage functionality, and tweaking a few things and uh, digging deeper in the system. Mechanically, we've had um, I've been working on complete documentation of our structure to prove to SpaceX that the pod is sound in critical joints and connections. Um, the team dinner at the In-N-Out Burger tonight um, has everybody in good spirits, and we're beginning another late night at uh, their team sponsor, Bulletproof Avenue, <laughs> Bulletproof Automotive. Um, we'd like to send a shout out to Bulletproof Automobile, blah, blah, blah. And this is a nice photograph outside of Bulletproof Auto Automobile. <laughs> Um, but working really hard late into the evening, um, looking at electronics. So good job. And then we go to day two, um, yesterday or so, um, testing week. Um, a busy night led to an even busier day at SpaceX. While not ideal, the electrical team had a long night continuing to debug as they prepare for batteries and testing um, navigation and functionality. Extensive work paid off and they were able to successfully prove to SpaceX that the batteries were safe despite the higher um, voltage characteristics. After this, uh, more work was done to prepare for meeting with our advisors. Unfortunately, we we're not able to have time with them later in the day because they were kept busy with other teams. Tomorrow, we'll be able to peel off more la layers of the system to ensure full pod functionality electric electrically. The mechanical team had a successful day with advisors to ensure um, the structure was sound and they've certainly made a number of improvements um, since last year um, and um, tomorrow they make sure that their pod fits on the rail a check that they've done at their test track at the steam fitters facility one of the generous sponsors so um, they can ensure that it'll be undamaged um, it, will, it will not damage the i-beam or the tube um, overall today was slow but it was accompanied by major steps forward we even got a tour of the boring company and to see one of the tunnels by assigning a bedtime to the electrical team and drinking copious amounts of hotel coffee. We're looking forward to day tomorrow on Wisconsin. So good job. Um, Hyperloop UPV, of course, we've been following their updates and Google translating it from Spanish. Um, Hyperloop UPV passes some more tests in a calm day that precedes the most complicated days in the competition, which is today and tomorrow. Um, the venue at the uh, SpaceX pod competition uh, takes place a large uh, parking lot um, that's used for storage um, then cleaned uh, for the event. Uh, from the entrance door you can see the small white tents, two, part two per participant, where the university teams work tirelessly from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. Um, it's easy to get to the site. Um, it's right next to the hyper uh, pod competition tube on Jack Norfolk, Jack Norfolk Avenue. Um, in one of these tents, is there, there's an industrial fan um, uh, to relieve some from the suffocating heat. Um, great pressure on the teams um, to perform a quiet Tuesday in a convoluted competition. Hyperloop BPV set, exceeded the first test of evaluation of ba battery inspection in the early hours of the morning, which authorized them to start the prototype's battery at any time. Um, next, they present the procedures to pass the next test and receive some recommendations to improve them. Everyone goes to work with the objective requesting a new revision before the end of the day. The Hyperloop pod competition is complex from the perspective of, an, of as, a visit, as a visitor um, to whom everything seems gibberish of trials, evaluations, and advisors. All this, however, is to approve the 10 evaluations comprised in turn by small tests that give access to the 11th the launch of the prototype in the vacuum tube. Saving some more specific tests such as battery inspection and mechanical fit check um, is an inseparable requirement to access more global ones such as functional tests. 
There's no single way to overcome them. In fact, the strategy to decide which evaluations to certify before is essential in the battle to reach the tube since the equipment required for this um, um, has a very limited availability. The tube is not very available sometimes. Um, a team may prefer to try to overcome the evaluations by opting for the numbers one, four, three, two, and five in that order, while another may choose four, one, two, three, and five. However, the test in the camera, um, however, the test um, can take two hours per participant. If you consider that there are two dozen formations and only 50 hours of competition before Sunday, the accounts are clear and very fair. Arriving early to certain uh, equipment to avoid pauses or cues becomes a strate strategic war between team managers. Um, two hints of difficulty ahead. As if there was, were not enough, two ingredients were added to complicate the recipe. The first is that the availability of advisors, SpaceX uh, engineers, um, who perform the evaluations. The participants should ask them to visit, but they only have a limited time and many prototypes to attend. Also, um, if you get a chance and everything is not ready by the requested advisor, appears suddenly the prototype goes to the end of the review queue and time is lost. The second is that each test has to be evaluated as a previous part, the approval of procedures. Um, this implies that before even uh, being able to pass a test the way um, it'll be executed um, must be approved by a team of SpaceX engineers. This preliminary phase is so thorough and meticulous that even necessary to validate the procedure to remove the prototype from its transport box. So they have to even get the okay to remove uh, the vehicle from the transport box or move it to a tent. Um, 24 hours a day, the test for the challenge determine the entire organization and functioning of the Hyperloop UPV set. Each working group, propulsion structures, and energy is responsible for specific tests. Similarly, if a certain day you don't have to certify any tests in the area, it's very likely that the next day will touch you. So when the prototype returns to the house after 17 hours, it is your turn to work until the wee hours of the morning in order to have everything ready. Uh, the hours of Tuesday are exhausting and Hyperloop exhausted and Hyperloop UPV does not uh, carry out further evaluations. The new revision has not finally arrived. So today, Wednesday, um, they'll try to pass some tests related to avionics. So the members of that section have spent the night awake. In the competition, you can breathe the calm before the storm. Uh, starting today, most complicated tests, the most difficult has yet to begin. So good job. Um, now we see some Instagram uh, accounts um, Swiss Loop, um, sometimes one laptop is not enough for this street's, this week's Meet the Team. Um, we'd like to introduce you to Michael, he's electrical engineering. Um, how has testing gone so far? Um, is going quite well. The engineers at SpaceX and the Boring Company are, are challenging questions. Um, it's very impressive to see how you can look at a pod and identify crucial points that require further testing, but also comp complement good design choices. The experience and feedback they bring to our design is invaluable. Um, what's the biggest challenge? Today was one of the most challenging. Um, the software I wrote was scrutinized from the state transfers to navigation and algorithms all the way to explaining very last detail of user interfaces. The stress was rewarded when we passed the vacuum chamber test at the end of the day. How's the atmosphere? The whole experience has been credible and the team played um, the most important role from relaxing at the beach together uh, before the competition started to staying up all night to test the pod. Everything is always, um, you got two laptops, if I ever need a third, I know my team's got my back. That's funny. And let's just quickly look at Swiss Pod. Um, they released a video. Hi guys, I'm Maria. I'm responsible for communication at Swiss And I'm here today at the SpaceX grounds. Um, you can see like the test tube in the background. And yeah, I'm just gonna give you a quick update on how things are going so far. And this is from day one. So on our first official day, uh, yesterday at the in the testing week, our pod passed all the mechanical tests, which is really great, and we're very excited and happy about that. And yeah, yeah so now on day two, we're moving on to the electrical tests, and this was we yesterday. hope it will continue to go as well as it did yesterday. We'll see, and we'll keep you updated. So yeah. Keep an eye out for our stories and our posts. And yeah, see you soon, hopefully. Bye. So that's cool. Um, good job, Swiss Loop. Um, so now let's just take a quick look 
um, of a spreadsheet that was shared by uh, Delft Hyperloop um, of all the teams. Um, we can see mainly in the mechanical fit, a lot of teams have done um, pretty well. Swiss Loop, Tomb, um, Hype Ed, EPF Loop, and Delft. Um, structural, a lot of teams are doing well. Again, um, the same teams kind of as the mechanical, but also um, other teams like Abishkar, Badger Loop, Hyperxcite, Midwest, MIT, One Loop, Paradigm, and um, UMD. Um, battery inspection, again, um, some of the same teams are doing very well. Um, and uh, Swiss Loop as well, and University, or UW uh, Hyperloop, you know, Wisconsin, uh, Washington. Um, functional tests are doing very well. Um, EPFL has passed that full battery, so has Swiss Loop. Um, and then vacuum tests, EPFL got through um, many of the tests, um, and so did Swiss Loop. Um, vacuum test is always really difficult. Um, and usually they, last year's, they had a very small uh, chamber to test that. Um, navigation tests, EPFL uh, loop also uh, did very well. So did um, some of the other teams like Delft and Badger loop and Paradigm and Hyperlinks and Swiss loop. So good job. Um, state diagram transition tests. Um, that's a good one, I don't know exactly what the diagram <laughs> transition test is, but some of the same teams did well. Um, and external subtrack, um, EPFL, Delft uh, did some of them, Hyperloop UPV did some of them, uh, Swiss Loop, uh, Tomb, Hyperloop, um, so that's good. And then op Open Air, Hyperloop Test, Delft, EPFL, Hyperloop UPV, HyperXcite, Swiss Loop, and Tomb. Um, so good job. And then Hyperloop tests, um, functional tests, vacuum tests, um, mechanical fit. This is mainly mechanical tests. Um, and then pod health checklist, uh, Swiss Loop, Tomb, and uh, EPFL, Hyperloop UPV, um, Hyped for one of the mechanical fit tests in Delft. So good job. Um, and just to uh, do a quick spreadsheet, um, this is just uh, the scores from all of this. Um, in passing the test, which I, I don't know if this is actually accurate, but Swiss Loop is, is leading EFFL, Delt, Tomb, Hyperloop, UPV, Paradigm, Badger Loop, UW, Hyperloop, HyperXcite, MIT, Abishkar, um, University of New South Wales, um, um, and then Hyped, uh, One Loop, Slow Loop, Hyperlinks, UMD, Queens, Hyperloop of VT, Midwest, and then University of Wisconsin Loop. So I don't know if those are actually accurate, um, but we'll continue to um, monitor this. Um, Delft Hyperloop um, uh, has been working hard with their partners and um, sponsors um, to present a uh, passenger experience that's... Uh, to the Amsterdam Hyperloop station. The station is located right underneath the city center, integrated with existing infrastructure, enabling you to access the station easily from the city as well as surrounding areas. The Hyperloop network connects large European cities over 100 kilometers apart, being the sustainable alternative to short to medium haul flights. After choosing the destination, passengers check in before entering the platform. Hyperloop is mostly a point-to-point -point system eliminating intermediate stops and the need to change pods. Departure in six minutes, two minutes and running for that pod. The that blend into open but landscapes, okay. aligning with existing transport infrastructure where possible. In densely populated areas, the pods travel underground to minimize the urban impact of the hyperloop. At the start of the tube, airlocks will depressurize the pod surroundings. The pods are made using lightweight materials shaped in a way that is optimal for pressurization as well as aerodynamics in the near vacuum environment. That's cool. And to we've seen a lot of um, the pods are divided information into by Delft sections. on their design. The social section offers an environment where you can enjoy your trip with friends and family. In the far end of the pod, a separate compartment can be found where private meetings can be held during the trip. 
To ensure a pleasant travel experience, the interior is designed to be light and spacious, using nature as inspiration. The overhead skylights simulate the outside environment, no making it feel like you're sitting right outside. That's cool. Ultimately, Delft Hyperloop envisions a sustainable transportation system in which you're able to fully enjoy your trip while speeding smoothly towards your destination. Very cool render. Very well done, Delft. Um, and then we're going to go into some of the Instagram stories. Hyperloop UCD. One loop. Uh, Tomb Hyperloop has, uh, is at the uh, Munich airport. That's cool. I'm getting ready to come over. Hyperloop UPV. Um, did a good job on their day three post. Magnets are here for Vegapod. Almost 70 kilos. Um, again, Alpha and uh, Loop from India is recruiting for next year's pod competition. EPFL. Um, second day of testing done. And that's a long stretch of road there. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Um, Monday was the first official day of testing. Hi, and we've already Thanks. seen this one. Yeah. Uh, Delft Hyperloop, they had this. Unfortunately, we experienced some setbacks this morning. Um, currently working from our Airbnb, postponing testing at SpaceX. Um, luckily, we have our very own happy crew who takes care of us daily, keeps us happy. Um, and of course, they're make sure that they're, nobody's hungry. That's really helpful. Um, University of Windsor Loop is working hard on uh, some of the electronics. HyperEd is going back to Throwback Tuesday. Um, and then they have their very own HyperEd van. That's cool, they put the logo on there. Um, and if we can just go to EPFL to watch this video, oops. Problem with the screws uh, at SpaceX to uh, pass the problem with technical uh, on test. Pod. So we had to uh, actually change all the screw of the inserts. So basically, oh, no. tens of screws, <laughs> and uh, the screws are actually really hard to find. But you uh, drive more than an hour away, and oh, no. use additional washers. Uh, it took us uh, the all night yesterday, and we had to get up really early in this this morning to finish up uh, some more for just changing some small screws for a small detail because basically they're all like oh no that's so crazy I had to change the screws um, on the entire pod that's not easy um, and uh, yeah that about leaves it for us um, stay uh, connected let us know what you think in the description um, we see a lot of interesting work uh, being done by the teams. And uh, briefly, I just wanted to share, um, uh, uh, sorry, Midwest Hyperloop um, is trying to get everybody um, from all the Hyperloop pod competition teams to take a photo up close um, of a certain detail on the pod, share something um, you like about the pod, a fun fact, story you tell, um, and then nominate another Hyperloop pod competition team and uh, post the photo. So on Midwest Hyperloop pod, um, they're focusing on the pressure vehicle um, and um, it's named ASME Certified One Atmosphere um, Atmos. Um, Atmos uh, holds our battery pack, uh, motor controllers and other electrical components. Atmos will be pressurized and sealed to provide protection from the to the electronics of the pod. Atmos has to pass five um, uh, through Pass, sorry, Atmos has five pass-throughs for electrical connections and three outlets for pressure valves. Um, the relief valve is important as the pressure inside the vessel can increase significantly due to heat dissipated from the batteries. We really appreciate um, CMS Manufacturing for the making this. And there's the very um, close-up photo of the, of the release valve. So stay in the Hyperloop, let us know what you think, and um, we'll talk again soon.